Praise the Lord. I welcome you all in the mighty name of Jesus. Single women, are you ready? So I'm going to take you to um, the book of Ruth. So we see in the book of Ruth, in the first part, it's just pain. Are we together? This was pain, pain in a relationship. So there are some single women that suffered pain in past relationships. Maybe you suffered pain in the area of heartbreak, whereby the relationship that you invested in didn't last, or it, it went um, wrong somewhere along the line, and it left you broken hearted. There are some people, women, whose partners may have passed on. There are some women who went through a difficult situation whereby there was so much confusion and warfare that she could not stay together with their partner. Now, in the case of Ruth, we see that she loses a partner, he passes on. And she's so, so heartbroken. And this relationship dies in a season of fair mind. It means it's a season of emptiness, a season of dryness. This is a season of the wilderness that what was meant to grow is failing to grow. This relationship where they were supposed to spend their life together and grow old together, we see now it has entered into the wilderness and dried up. But I want you to know, beloveds of God, that if you, were, if you had entered into a season of dryness with somebody, it doesn't mean that that is the end of your des destination. God is still speaking concerning you. You just need to be positioned in the right field. Your prayer point in this season, Lord, whose field are you positioning me in? Whose field are you positioning me in? You know that you are headed towards the right field if God is involved. Hallelujah. When God is involved in it, we see in Ruth 1 verse 6, that she arose with her daughters-in-law that she may re might return from the country of Moab, for she heard in the country of Moab how the Lord visited his people, giving them bread. And wherefore she set out of the place where she was, and her daughter-in-laws with her, and they went on the way to return unto the land of Judah. Now when we look at Judah, beloveds of God, it is the place where you want to experience joy. You don't want a toxic relationship. You want a Judah relationship, a, a relationship full of laughter. That man must be your best friend. The shoulder you can count on, the man you can rely on, the man you can, you know, share the rest of your life with. That is your Judah. Are we together? So we see that now Naomi prophetically is taking Ruth into her Judah season. They are leaving the wilderness into Judah. I pray for every single woman, may your relationship that you are going to enter into bring you so much joy, peace, and prosperity. She heard that the Lord was giving his people bread. He was releasing the manna. And I decree and I declare, let the manna of marriage be released over this platform in the name of Jesus. Those that are planting, here are your details. Every woman that is believing for marital favor, may you enter into your manna season. God is releasing the bread. We see in the Bible that in the, when the children of Israel were in the wilderness, God released the manna to sustain them. And in this season, hallelujah, the women that are lonely, the women that are saying, I'm tired of being alone, hallelujah, may God release your marital manna in the name of Jesus, we declare. So Naomi is prophetically leading Ruth into Judah. She tries to send Ruth away, go away. And Ruth refuses. She says, where you go, I will go. Where you stay, I will stay. Hallelujah. The God that you serve, I will serve. So we see that now she enters into her Judah season. I decree and I declare you are entering. You are entering into your Judah season. You have to enter into your Judah season expectant. Because sometimes what Judah looks like is not what it seems. Hallelujah. So when they enter into Judah, they are still empty. Naomi is even crying. Don't call me Naomi, call me Mara. For the Almighty God has dealt bitterly with me. But he didn't, she didn't know that the God that, that she felt dealt bitterly with her was, the, was getting ready to turn her bitter into better. She says, I went out full and the Lord has sent me home empty. The Bible tells us that now Ruth and Naomi are living together. Hallelujah. And they arrive in Bethlehem at the beginning of the barley harvest. So I came to prophetically decree and declare over every single woman, this is the beginning of your barley harvest. I want you to know, beloveds of God, 
there is physical alcohol and there is spiritual alcohol. What do I mean by that? Hallelujah. There is physical joy and spiritual joy. The Bible says that um, when you get drunk on the Holy Spirit, remember he's the new wine, isn't it? You are filled with joy. I'm telling you, get ready to celebrate. Get ready to put on your wedding gown. Get ready to walk down the aisle. Tell your bride, start to pick your bridesmaids. Start, start to pick the colors for your your wedding because this is the beginning of your body harvest. Hallelujah. Now, you don't just go into any field, beloveds of God. We see that Naomi had to lead Ruth into the right field. There were many fields in Bethlehem, beloveds of God, and all of them were, were in the harvest season. So the man that you are looking for is not in the beginning season, he's in his harvest season. The type of man that understands his position as a husband, the type of man that is steady, that is what we call a harvest husband. You don't want to enter into a relationship with a man that is still trying to understand what marriage is all about. A man that is still enjoying life and, and not ready to settle, but wants to get married for the sake of others. That is not your portion. You want the harvest. You want the harvest. Say, Lord, send me the man that is my harvest. Hallelujah. The man that is ripe and ready. The man that is understanding and wisdom and counsel. The man that knows how to treat a woman. The man that knows how to comfort a woman and, and nurture a woman. That is the harvest man. Hallelujah. So there were many fields, beloveds of God. Amen. But we see that Naomi, hallelujah, begins to search for the harvest man for Ruth. She then perceived in Ruth chapter 2 verse 1, Naomi had a kinsman of her husband. He was a mighty man of wealth of the family of Elimelech, and his name was Boaz. Hallelujah. So he was from a family line that believed in the Lord. Hallelujah. That he was already in his harvest season. He's a man that knew what he wanted in life. He's a man, hallelujah, that was not just uh, spreading himself everywhere. Hallelujah. There were many women before Ruth, but he never entered into relationship with any of them. He was waiting for the right woman. He was a careful planner. Are we together? He didn't want to settle and understand that when you when you are wealthy men, women will come flocking to you because every woman wants to marry a man of prestige. But here we see that he's still single. As blessed as he is, as truthful as he is, hardly as intact as he is, he does not settle because he's looking for the right woman. I decree and I declare that the man that are, that he refuses to settle. The man that is looking for the right woman, may he locate you in the mighty name of Jesus, we declare. Naomi, I mean, understands the anointing on Boaz's life as she sends Ruth, hallelujah, into the right field. She enters into his field as she begins to glean ears of corn. She's putting her ears to the ground. She wants to know, hallelujah, more. So in this season, you need to put your ears to the ground. That man that you are going to meet, hallelujah, get to know about him more. Find out from his family, his friends, hallelujah. Put your ears to the ground so that you are not disappointed. Amen. So yeah, she goes for the ears. She is gleaning the ears of corn. She says, I'm going into the field and I'm going to glean ears of corn after him. Hey, after him in whose sight I shall find grace. She has already prophesied that the, the field I'm about to enter into, I will find grace with that man. I will find favor in his sight. And she went and she came and she entered the field and she gleaned after the reapers and her mantle was to was too light on the part of the field belonging to Boaz. And behold, Boaz came from Bethlehem and said to the reapers, the Lord be with you. You see how he starts? He's a man of God. The Lord be with you. And they answered him, and said, the Lord bless you. This was a man of God. Then said Boaz unto his servant, there was set over the reapers, whose woman is this? People must start to inquire about you. People must start to investigate, whose woman is this? Is she single? Is she married? Where is she coming from? Tell me more about her. Hallelujah. May God send your future husband to investigate about you in the mighty name of Jesus. So you make it very clear in this season that you are not in, in an entangling, entanglement. You are not in a complicated relationship. 
Hallelujah. Right now in your life, if you know that you are in a relationship that is not worth it, let go. Because when that man starts to inquire, whose woman is this? They might say, it is the woman of that entanglement. It is the woman of that complication. No, she is with someone. Make it plain. Make it clear. It's either you're hot or you're cold. Are we together? You cannot be hanging on to a de dead relationship waiting for a, for a loving relationship. It's better to let go of the dead relationship. So when the loving relation comes and starts to inquire about you, there is no blockage that, that will stop him. Many people, do you understand that many single women missed their Kairos moment because they were in a relationship with somebody that they were whiling time with? Say, now I'll just spend my time because I'm lonely with this person, but I have no intention with him. I'm waiting for Mr. Wright. But now when Mr. Wright inquires about you, they'll tell him he's a ma she's a married woman. She is going out with someone and he moves away. Are we together? So make it plain, make it clear. Set the runway. Hallelujah. If you believe that you want to get married in this season, don't put decoys in the in the forefront. Don't put anything that will block you from entering into your marital season. So he asked, whose woman is this? And the servant that was set over, the reaper said, it is the Moabitish damsel that came back with Naomi. So they had already done the investigations. You know, people are very curious. You think that people are not watching you. They, they got information on you. Are we together? And if it goes to the ears of your future husband, make sure it is the correct information. Yeah, and she said, I pray you let me glean and gather from the reapers among the sheaves. So she came and she continued even from the morning until now. Hallelujah that she tarried a little in the house. So you find that she was at the right field at the right time. She, she didn't leave early. Why Boaz was able to connect with her and there was a divine connectress down, not my daughter, go not to another field to glean. So he's telling her, you have found the right field. Don't go anywhere else, stop searching, stop looking because I'm the one. Hey. I think that is the most romantic sentence in the book of Ruth, where he tells us your days of searching are over, your days of looking are over. You don't need to go to another field, stay here. So he's telling her, you are at the right place at the right time. The Bible says that Boaz said to her, don't go glean in another field, but stay here. Let their eyes be on the field that you reap. Your eyes must stay on my field, your eyes on me, your eyes on me. And I have told all the men not to touch you. Every man that has been trying to touch you, single woman that has no intention of marrying you, let them be disconnected in the name of Jesus. I pray for every single woman. No time waster will, will locate you. Yeah, we see that Boaz has made it very clear that this woman that has entered into my field, none of you are able to touch her. Not even one of you because you are not on a level. But you need a man that knows what he wants, beloveds of God. Not a man of confusion, isn't it? He must know what he wants. When he sees you and he wants you, he must make it known to everyone, hey, this is my woman. Um, he then charges the young men that they must not even touch her. Hallelujah. And she says, if you are thirsty, listen very carefully because single women, maybe you are thirsty, isn't it? She says, if you are thirsty, I've already arranged water for you. Hey? He is thinking of every fiber of a bean. He knows where Ruth is coming from. Hallelujah. He knows that she has been toiling. She has been working. She has been sweating, trying to get the right relationship. And here he is saying, not only have I invited you into my field, I'm about to quench your thirst. Hey, that man that is going to quench your, your thirst, the man that is going to put the ring on the finger, he will finish all your thirst for all your years of waiting in the name of Jesus. So he says, if you are thirsty, Hey, water is already prepared for you. Hallelujah. Then she fell on her face and she bowed herself to the ground. And she says, why have I found grace in your, your, your eyes that you should take so much knowledge of, him, of me? Hallelujah. She says, I'm a stranger. How is it possible that you are acknowledging me in such a way? And Boaz answered and said to her, it has been fully shown to me. Hey. God, has, God revealed a lot to Boaz, beloveds of God. It has been fully shown to me all that you have done to your mother-in-law. So when he was looking at her, listen very carefully, he saw the way she treated his, her mother-in-law. So if such a woman, if I marry such a woman, she'll be good to my family. She won't fight my family. 
So that is what I think also attracted him to say, I won't have to have any complications. This woman knows how to deal with in-laws. Hey, may God give you the grace to deal with in-law, your, your future in-laws in the mighty name of Jesus. So he says, a God has revealed to me. He has shown me everything of how you have been good to Naomi. Amen. Even though she was not from your tribe, even though she was not from your lineage, you were so good to her. Until now, you have been so good to her. And then he says, may God reward you for that work. Hey, so you see the reward was marriage. His prayer for Ruth was, may God reward her for what she has done. And the reward that Ruth got was marriage. So he says, may God reward, recompense your work and a full reward be given unto you the lord god of israel so the man that is coming to you may he come in his fullness in the name of jesus amen so he says the lord recompense your work and a full reward be given unto you under whose wings you have come to trust meaning that he understood i'm a man of god and this woman is a woman of god because she is under the wings of god god is the one that is carrying her he carried her to my fields he carried her into my life. May God carry you into the life of that man. Then she answered and said, let me find favor in your sight. So your future husband, may you find favor in his sight. She understood her value. She understood her uniqueness. She said, let me find favor in your sight, my Lord, for you have comforted me. Hey! So that man is a comforter, beloved of God. Number one, you need a man that will be able to comfort you. Because they are up and down seasons, isn't it? They are good and bad times. That man must be able to stand with you through the thick and thin. Number two, you have spoken friendly over me. That means that that man will not be violent in your life. Hallelujah. There will be no violence. There will be no anger. He will learn how to communicate. He's, he's a great communicator. Hallelujah. He will speak friendly with you. So she says, that is what I've seen in your life. You are, you are a comforter. You speak friendly. Even though I'm not like one of the handmaidens, that was a shade. You know, she was throwing shade because she knew, hey, off, out of all these women, he, he never took their hands. And then here I come and all of a sudden, all eyes on me, attention on me. I'm not like the other handmaidens. May that man be attracted to your value and your uniqueness in the mighty name of Jesus, we declare. Now Boaz prepared a table, Ruth 2 verse 14. And Boaz said to her, at mealtime, come and eat with me. Hey, he was practicing, hallelujah, what's going to happen in their household. He had already prepared the table. He wanted to make sure she saw that he is a provider. He made sure there's bread and everything on that table. Hallelujah. And he says, let me show this woman that I'm going to provide for her. Let me show this woman that I can support her. Let me invite her to my table. So Boaz said, at mealtime, you need to come. We eat together. And so she sat beside the reapers and he reached her parched corn. So he was feeding her now. She said, this is what's going to happen when I marry you. He started to feed her with his own hand, beloved of God. He reached for the corn. Hey! And he fed her. And she ate. Hallelujah. And she was full and she left. And when she rose up to glean, Boaz commanded the young men, hallelujah, let her glean even among the sheaves. Don't even block her, don't stop her, don't reproach her. Leave her alone because now she is becoming the owner of the field, beloveds of God, you see. So Boaz said she was gleaning the leftovers, let her go into the harvest now. Because now she can take what she wants, let her go take there. So the Bible says, hallelujah, and make sure that you let a lot of, of what she is gleaning fall in the handfuls on purpose for her. Fill her cup on purpose, praise the Lord. So now the reason why he blessed her on purpose, he didn't want her to leave. Because by now, if she was in the other side of the field, the what she was gleaning would have finished. But now she is in overflow, overflow, overflow. Her cup is running over. So now she's in the field till the evening. What Boaz was saying to her, you'll be in my life from the morning till the evening. You are mine and I am yours. He didn't want her to leave the field. He kept on dropping favor, dropping favor. The man that locates you, he won't want you to leave his field. Hallelujah, because he knows that hmm, 
I can't let it out of my sight. I can't let her go. Let her glean in my field. She, instead of leaving early now, she spent more time in the field. When others had left, she was still there. Hey! And so she took it up and went into the city and showed her mother-in-law, look at what I've brought forth. Amen. And the mother says, where did you glean today? Where were you? Blessed is he that took knowledge on you. Hallelujah. And she said, the man's name whom I gleaned from is Boaz. The man that you are going to name as your husband, let him appear in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And Naomi began to rejoice. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. He has not shown us unkindness. He has given us kindness once again. And she says, that is the man. That is our next kingsman. Hallelujah. And she says, and he said to me that I must glean as much as I want in the harvest. So Naomi says, I will not rest until it is well with you. Praise the Lord. He is winnowing barley tonight in the threshing floor. So when you see the threshing floor, it separates wheat from the chaff, holy from unholy, clean from unclean. So we see that Boaz is getting ready to thresh. He's, he's sifting all the negativity out of his life because he's getting ready to become a husband. Hallelujah. So he's on the threshing floor. That man that is going to take your, your hand in marriage, before he meets you, let him go to the threshing floor. So he can separate all, he must disconnect from all ungodly relationships. He must disconnect from bad friends. He must disconnect from everything that is going to be toxic to your and his relationship in the name of Jesus. Boaz went to the threshing floor. He's preparing himself. He's at the threshing floor. You also need to prepare yourself, woman. So Ruth tells her, wash yourself. Hallelujah. That is preparation also. You need to let go. If you have any numbers of exes, if you have any photos of exes that keep on drawing you back to them, ETC, disconnect. When you see washing, hallelujah, woman of God, you have to wash yourself of everything that could endanger your future husband or your future marriage. Are we together? Let nothing come between you and your future husband in the name of Jesus. So here we see she's also threshing. Naomi tells her, you need to wash, remove all the dust, remove the past, remove all the confusion, deal with your emotions, prepare yourself, sanctify yourself. So here we see she first has to wash. Ruth says, go and bath. Hallelujah. Go and bath. All the dirt must go. Then anoint yourself. So you are going to anoint yourself as a wife of somebody, a future wife, and you are going to anoint your wedding finger. Hallelujah. Anoint it and say, I set my wedding finger apart for my wedding ring. She has to wash herself, then anoint herself, and then put your clothing on, your new raiment. So we see that you are removing the garment of mourning. You're going to you're gonna stop crying over the past, and you are going to put the garment of marital favor on. Hallelujah. Wash yourself, anoint yourself, then dress yourself. Then you can go to the threshing floor to go and meet with Boaz. Hallelujah. Because he's also threshing. He's also cleaning himself. Hallelujah. So we see here, beloveds of God. Hallelujah. And it shall be, where am I now? Hallelujah. I'm looking. Okay. She says, wash yourself and go down to the floor. But make not yourself known unto the man until he is done eating and drinking. Hallelujah. And it shall be when he lies down that you shall mark the place where he lies. In the realm of the spirit today, you are going to mark your husband. Are you hearing? Say, the husband that, that I'm, is coming my way, I mark you for greatness. Because you are the greatness of the Lord. Hallelujah. Say, I mark you for greatness. I'm a great woman. You are coming my way in the name of Jesus. It says, go to the place where he is and mark him. Hey, where he is. Hallelujah and you will uncover his feet. When I speak of feet, beloved of God, I speak of direction. That means, hallelujah, you are now, he's not gonna move in, one, in, in direction by himself. He's gonna move in direction, both of you together in the same direction as one flesh in the name of Jesus. So she says, go and uncover his feet because you're, the direction you guys are taking is to the altar, to the I do season, hallelujah. So, so you mark his feet and you lie down and tell he will tell you what you will do. The Bible says, hallelujah, says everything you told me to do, I will do it. And she went on to the floor and did according to her mother-in-law. And when Boaz had eaten and drunk, his heart was merry. Hallelujah. He was so happy. 
I believe he was happy because he was getting ready to find the right woman that was going to add a multiply to his life. How did he build a family with him? So he lay down at the end of the heap of the corn. He had come to the end of singleness. He said that man is about to come to the end of singleness. His days of singleness are coming to an end because you have arrived in the name of Jesus, we declare. He lay down at the end of the corn. Hallelujah. And she came softly. That is the thing that women need to understand. You have to come femininely. Hallelujah. Don't come out. As some women, first day meeting a person, when are we going to get married? What are we doing? Uh-uh. Ruth came softly. So she just uncovered his feet and lay down. And it came to pass at midnight that the man was afraid and turned himself. Hey! Can somebody prophesy? What, what does that mean? When a man turns himself, what does that mean? It means he's changing his way. Turning himself. He's turning around. Supernatural turn around. He's turning. He's turning. He's changing. He's changing. He's transforming. Transforming. Hallelujah. Getting ready for you. Praise the Lord. The man turned himself and behold, a woman lay at his feet. And he said, who are you? And she said, I am Ruth, your handmaid, yours. Then he says, spread. And she says, spread therefore thy skirt over your handmaid because you are my kinsman. You need to cover me. Hey, because you, you know that you are the man for me. And he said, blessed be thou of the Lord, my daughter, for you have shown me more kindness at the end than at the beginning. You see, beloveds of God, Boaz thought he would never get married. You hear, yeah, he said, wow, you have shown me kindness. I didn't even know you would even pick me. You didn't even follow other men. Whether they were poor, whether they were rich, you didn't follow. But you have shown me, you have chosen me. Hey, you are so happy, guys. So, so happy. He says, do not fear. I'm going to do what is right. Really, I'm going to take it. You are virtuous. You are a virtuous woman. I'm going to do what is right. I'm going to marry you. Hey, I'm going to marry you. I'm going to marry you. The whole city will know that you are a virtuous woman. So he says, I'm going to go to the kingsman and I'm going to take your hand. That now he goes before the kingsman. And he says, I want Ruth. He takes off his shoe as direction as I say it. And he says, I'm taking off the shoe because I want to marry Ruth. Hallelujah. I'm changing my direction. I want to marry this woman. And they said, yes, she can be your wife. Where are the wifeys to be tonight? Hallelujah. Where are the wifeys to be? Hey, the wifeys are rising in the name of Jesus. So here we see that he begins to pray for her. He says, now that I've married you, they said, the, the wife that you are going to marry is going to build the house of Israel. Hallelujah. Because they've already seen the quality of this woman. They, you are a builder. Isn't it? You are a producer, beloved of God. So they understood that this man is marrying a producer. He's marrying a builder. And he, they said, may she be like Tamar. Who gave double favor? Hurry, she's going to give you double portion. Praise the Lord. I decree that you are going to flow in double portion in this season. You are anointed for double portion. So Boaz took Ruth and she was his wife. And he went in unto her. And the Lord gave her conception. And she bore a son. The family was starting now, you see. Hallelujah. And the women said to Naomi, Blessed be the Lord for this day. You, you, have, you have been a given a kinsman. God is truly a restorer and he is a nourisher. So we see the family builds and this family becomes a family of kings and this family becomes a family of God. So I pray for every single woman tonight. If you are single, come forward. Let me just bless you. Hallelujah. Every yoke of marital bondage comes to an end today in the name of Jesus. Every power behind frustration in your life comes to an end in the name of Jesus. You are coming forth out of captivity by the power of God. Hallelujah. Every household wickedness saying you will never marry shall be astonished with great astonishment. May God arise and visit the foundation of your life. I decree your marital destiny is great. Hallelujah. The man whose field you are about to enter, you will enter 
in the mighty name of Jesus. Favor, favor, marital favor over you. In the mighty name of Jesus, I speak marital settlement by the power of the living God. May God deal with your life and deal with every situation in your life connected to your marital door in the name of Jesus. We declare 